You guys, I hate Clubhouse. Uh, I think Clubhouse may be what Periscope couldn't. Um, and I'm not even involved with Periscope anymore. I think I was on there for a little while and it just kind of... It really missed the mark as a social media platform for me because there is a very limited expression, right? You can only type so much. You can only say so much, you know, as opposed to like, you know, a YouTube chat where you can just keep on going, keep on going. Unless, you know, you're timed out or the chat has slowed down, something like this, where you can get it all out. On Clubhouse, you cannot make a comment. When you hear some nonsense, gaslighting, lies, fabrication, you cannot make a comment. The most you can do is raise your hand and hope that somebody puts you on stage. And even when you raise your hand, you know, somebody could just slap your hand down and then it'll say, hey, moderators have turned off hand raising. So you can't get up there even if you know the truth. You see, Clubhouse for me is like... Uh, excuse me I'm literally tired of tired of clubhouse I'm yawning like I just got off and I was just listening to some guy who chose to be a superhero by telling you know Crystal and Kara said not to talk about her mother or discuss her uh, issues that she had growing up with uh, her maternal figure. And I guess he used that to try to look like he was some kind of a hero, save the day or, ooh, I'm going to honor the black mother, mother, when in reality, her mother doesn't qualify for that. Like my mama does, right? If anybody talks bad about my mama, my mama is the kind of woman, is the matriarch that you would stop somebody from talking about. You honor that woman. But not every black mother, obviously, is entitled to that. And he kind of used it as an opportunity to do some moral grandstanding. And then when Chris Lynn confronted him over that, he was like, oh, well, it was just off the topic and it was just off the subject. And it was just a, just a, just a, and I was like, how was it off the subject? If you let somebody ask her five or six times, what kind of upbringing are you talking about? You let somebody ask her in your room five or six times. So when she finally answers the question, you have to cut her, you know, her neck off, her mouth off. You have to gag her. Why didn't you gag the person the first, second, third or fourth or fifth time they asked her that question? But like, it, it didn't matter. And I'm just like, a lot of these people, especially younger people, because Crystalline is a veteran in the game. She's been doing this for 10 years. So when it comes to swirling and divesting, any room she goes into, she's going to galvanize a following. Like, it, ju- it just is what it is. She, When you put in that amount of time into something, it gives you spiritual, it gives you something intangible that you you walk into any room and the and you open your mouth there it's just wait and so you have a lot of these you know millennials and gen zers who are newer to you know i don't want to say newer to the game because i hate that word but they're newer to this situation you know of divesting and pink pill and 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 swirling and you know black women you know laying down you know burning the the mammy cape and you know whipping out their femininity you know like like blowing the dust off of an old book you know and so they say a lot of redundant stuff to her that she's dealt with over the course of 10 years they say things that are not new they say things that let you know that they are you know (laughs) swirl 101 divestment 101 you know and she's this professor of the topic. And I follow her around, you know, I got invited to Clubhouse by somebody totally unrelated to her. Nevertheless, it was a black woman, and well, an African black woman. And um, I'm running into a lot of the same conversations that I've seen people have years ago on YouTube. And I'm just like, oh, anxiety, my anxiety, oh, my chest. Oh, my God, it hurts. My breathing help. Like, ew. And then on top of that, you can't react. It's not like there's a dislike button for you to take out your frustrations on. There's not like, 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 let's say you're on Zoom and everybody's in a Zoom meeting. Like, you know, at least you can like, like there's somewhere that you can type comments. And I think Zoom really wins with that design because the comments don't overwhelm the conversation. But at the same time, like, if you want to care for the comments and decide to involve yourself in the comments, you can just kind of click it open and see what everybody's writing and you can add specific people. You know, I, I mean, Zoom's not pretty. 
that's where Zoom fails with women. Zoom is very masculine in the way that it's constructed. It's just not a pretty place to be. Clubhouse is actually pretty in its design. The way people's little pictures pop up, bloop, bloop, the way that, you know, you're all of a sudden moderator. There's that cute little green thing. And, you know, the way profiles and things are put together, it's cute. But God, is it annoying. Like if I had to build a playground for a narcissist, that is what it would be. I mean, you can just mute the crap out of people, kick people off, yada, yada, yada. Like incomplete stories. You don't like what somebody's saying. You and your following can create a new room and just lie, lie, lie. And I'm just like... It's very hard to keep up with. I don't know if they like archive all their conversations and if you can scroll through things like you can like how you can do on YouTube. Like if somebody lies about something on YouTube, right, let's say a live stream happens and people say, oh, I never said that. All you've got to do is go to that little live stream and be like, oh, here's where you said it. You know, you said this at five minutes and 28 seconds. Aha, I found it. Right. You can do that. But on Clubhouse, I don't know if there's such a thing. So people just start lying, moving the goalposts, gaslighting. And before you know it, the conversation has become about something totally different than it was at, at the beginning. As in, if somebody's trying to figure out, you know, who's this guy who cussed out Crystal and Karis? And oh, this guy would never do that. Oh, well, you're saying this guy didn't. It's like, dude, okay, both of their names are Jay. Okay, my freaking bad. Let's move on. It's the other freaking Jay. And why are you testing her when you heard this guy call her phone she put it on speaker so everybody could hear she sent you freaking screenshots and it's just like oh prove to me you were raped even though you know you still got this guy semen in you you're throbbing your insides are ripped up well you gotta prove that i don't believe you <laughs> i know women who lie so <laughs> let me go ahead and re-traumatize you until you can make me feel like i want to believe you and she had to get like three or four different women on that stage to back her up now i know i'm saying a lot of things that like um require more context that i'm giving but i'm just really this is about why I don't like Clubhouse. I just don't like Clubhouse. The whole setup is for a person like me is so annoying. Like, like it's cute as an app. Like it's it's good to look at, right? Like, like, like Zoom is ugly, and I don't know how to. I don't even know how to. If if you're a woman, woman, you know, we pay attention to designs, we pay attention to layout, we pay attention to colors you use. Zoom is very masculine in appearance, right? There's not really a whole lot of bells and whistles. So like, you know, Zoom is like, ooh, click 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 click, ooh, click on this profile, ooh, Judge Lynn Toller, oh, that's wonderful. I want to follow her. Click click click, right? Like it's kind of cute. But beyond that, it is frustrating because you just kind of got to sit and listen to people be nonsensical as opposed to, you know, if you're on YouTube (laughs) and something goes on. I mean, sure, there's a moderator who can block you, time you out, but you can get that little comment in and you can get in enough words, you know, what is it, 200 characters, 300 characters, you can get in enough to make a point whereas here you, you you just can't respond and that's you know by design you know people get to let certain people on stage they can be talking about you when you enter a room and they don't have to let you on stage they can just kind of like leave you down there while they berate you and oh i have to do this with a cue and i'm just like who made up the clubhouse rules you know oh there's a cue oh i want to hold space for you like like there's this total jargon that goes on with like clubhouse and i'm just like this is annoying and then on top of that there's no such thing as camming up there's no such thing as like the thing with clubhouse is like okay clubhouse wants you to sign in as who you are so there's not supposed to be a bunch of fake names on there your name is not supposed to be tootie Woody. your name is not supposed to be you know benny hannas your name is not supposed to be a uppity unicorn you know like like i'm chocolate angel on a uh, clubhouse they encourage you to use your real identity however i mean come on you guys there there are ways around that there are ways around that so people are making up all kind of names and they don't have to stand on their square they don't have to stand on their word they don't have to 
like something I do on my YouTube channel for everyone who I've never seen cam up. I, I demand that they cam up or they can't get on my panel because whatever you're going to say on my channel, you need to be able to stay, stand behind it or just, you know, I'll see you in the comment section, period, because everybody else is putting their neck out here. And I'm just like, oftentimes there are people on YouTube who are the Wizard of Oz where they're sitting in their mom's dirty kitchen with the walls falling apart and they're talking all this stuff. And, you know, maybe they're hiding their background so you can't see it. And it's like, well, bro, if I knew that you were just some dude with titties and, and a dirty wife beater sitting in your mom's house, you know, eating up your mom's food, saying all these things, maybe I wouldn't respect what you say. Maybe I wouldn't honor what you say. Maybe what you say wouldn't bother me so much. I remember one time there was this relationship guru guy, you know, uh, I don't want to say his name, but like, you know, him, his suits and his perfume and his little red bottom shoes. But like one time he moved away from the camera. I was like, he's wearing a suit. Uh, he's wearing a tie, a dress shirt, a, you know, a blazer and pajama bottoms. Like he moved his chair too far away from where he was. And I was just like, I see his pajama bottoms. And I just laughed. I was like, you know, what a facade, what a joke. And here's the deal. There's nothing wrong with wearing pajama bottoms while you're alive. But if you're going to be, you know, highfalutin about how you're so superior to everybody else and how you dress so much better and how you are so much better and you've got on, you know, a tuxedo top and pajama, and pajama bottoms like boo, boo, mm mm. That, that that that's not that's not the math it it doesn't add up it it, it doesn't right so um i try to get it and the reason i'm talking about crystal and Karen is because she is like a friend of mine my actually my very best friend invited me to clubhouse um she's an incredibly articulate dynamic speaker so of course you know i follow her around like a little pup but Crystal and Karazin is what made me like really get into it because she went and, you know, there was some drama on YouTube where these, these phony baloney women just kind of came at her the wrong way. She's a very sensitive lady. And, you know, it resulted in her uh, deciding to take certain conversations and collaborations off of YouTube, which I mean, I didn't want to see that happen, but I'm just like, okay, well, you know, I subscribe to the channel, so I'm going to follow you wheresoever th thou art, okay? And I've gotten on there, and I'm just like, the anxiety in my chest from the conversation that I just left has not left me yet. Like, I left that conversation, but the anxiety has not left. Like, it is still here. I am still annoyed. I am still bothered. I am still offended. And there is nothing I could do to, I mean, I didn't raise my hand, but I could literally see like when she was like, yo, if you were in that room, raise your hand. And people were raising their hands to the point where the moderator just ended raising your hand. And I'm just like, what, you afraid everybody's going to come up here, disagree with you and agree with her? It, is that what it is? <laughs> is that what the problem is? <laughs> And then, you know, the men up there were like, oh, 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 I remember. I rem After telling her, no, this never happened. No, this never happened. I was in that room and this never happened. Well, if he did that, if Jay did that in that other room, then you say that he did that over there. He didn't do none of that over here. And then when three women came up there and backed her up, oh, yeah, you right. I remember. Ding, light bulb. So you sat there gaslighting her to the point of completely denying her experience to the point where... I mean, three different women had to come up who don't know each other. And it's like, oh, facts, huh? They're like, oh, well, you wanted to run away with a conversation about what your mom did to you. And that's just not right. And blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like blinking at my phone when she says, what do you mean I wanted to run away with a conversation about my mom? You mean after somebody asked me literally half a dozen times about my upbringing, about the kinds of upbringing in question? Are, 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 seriously? <laughs> I can't. And it's like re-engaging with people that I thought that we were going to erect this wall of silence against. Like depressing. Why, why do you want to re-engage with these people? If you know that they have this and that to say about black women and they want to be these fake pretenders. Like, bro, you're not. You, you, mm -mm. I watch people do this thing with people like Crystal and Karazin where they insult her. They give her these backhanded compliments where it's like, oh, well, you're like this and you're like this and you have this kind of character. But you know what? I like you. I follow you. What? 
<laughs> you know, where you're over here trying to spin a narrative about this and this, and you're trying to change the dialogue about this, and you're trying to gaslight. But you know, I, 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 I think you're very articulate. What? <laughs> what in the backhanded compliment is going on like 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 just go your way just go your way i i don't understand i don't understand people who dwell in spaces of people they don't like and they were like oh well we're just trying to get to the bottom of this i'm like no you're just trying to blame crystal and kerosene for this there's a difference call it what it is and it wouldn't let the woman talk i mean because there's moderators in the room and then you know in order for you to have some kind of power you have to be made a moderator i was made a moderator in, in one room right and the people were clearly younger than me these were a bunch of you know black women and men who had to be like in their early and late 20s and i'm in my mid-30s so you know when i spoke obviously i was the auntie of the room so i had a little bit more wisdom it is what it is. And they were just like, oh, yes, yeah, snap, snap. You know, let's take a moment of silence and just dwell on what the sister said. But they gave me a moderator privilege. And there you have to have moderator privileges to, you know, to, to effect change in the room, basically. And these people, I remember they got mad at Crystalline for starting her own room and having a conversation. And they literally told her, well, you have this many thousands of followers, so you could just start your own room. Leave mine. She said, okay, bye. <laughs> Started her own room and they got mad. because, And then they went to her room and were mad because they couldn't get on stage right away. I mean, it's not like she didn't let them on stage. She's just like, look, let me handle my cue. I have a long list of people who want to talk. And then once they talk because they, right, they got here first and you can. And I'm like, why isn't this just a panel with, with people's cameras open and everyone talking and looking at one another? What, why? Why isn't this just a StreamYard panel of 10 people talking where you can kick somebody off, let somebody up and, you know, everybody on YouTube is, you know, in the comment section and then you can put the comments across the screen, especially those that are relevant to the topic. And it's just like, well, right, you did say this. You did contradict yourself there because dude really was doing this moral grandstanding thing where he's like, well, you shouldn't talk about your mom and blah, blah, blah. And I protect black woman and I'm not going to let you talk about your mom. I don't know your mom, blah, blah, blah. But it's just like, okay, but her mom is not a black queen. Okay, you know, Afina Shakur, black queen. My mama, black queen. Like, oh, oh, Angela, but, but, but some black women don't qualify. Crystalline Carrison herself, she qualifies, but her mom doesn't. And this woman is sit sitting there, like, like discussing horrific abuse. I'm not going to repeat it here. But horrific abuse that she went through at the hand of her mother. And I'm just like, you choose to defend the abuser? <laughs> a woman is sitting here damn near crying telling you about her abuse you, you can hear and he was like oh well i thought it was performative you know what he means by performative that 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 means he, these jokes that means you're lying that means you're full of crap how are you gonna tell somebody oh well i thought what you were doing was just performative and then say oh i like you i follow you e <sighs> I mean, I get it. It's a new circle of people to reach out to. We have gotten fatigued with certain people on YouTube. Like, it, it's just some content creators who have been out here for, you know, half a decade to an entire decade. And we know what they're about. And we don't want to mix with them. And maybe, you know, I mean, I mean, she's on a mission. So there are new people to meet. There are new things to say. There are new discussions to get into that are not so new, but they're new because they're new people. Like, I get that as her as basically kind of like... Because people are like, well, this is my room and you don't own this discussion. And I'm just like, you can say she doesn't own the discussion, but she kind of wrote the Bible on it. <clears throat> I mean, let's keep it a buck and a hundred. Like she, she, she kind of wrote the Bible on this. The, 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 I mean, I mean, what? You're going to talk about Salat and Zakat and Siam and then, and then tell the Prophet Muhammad, hey, what are you, uh, Salallahu Alaihi Wasallam, hey, what are you doing here? What are you doing here, man? This is this, this, this is my mosque. Okay, well, he's the prophet, though. I mean, if this was a religion, Crystalline Charism would be the prophet. Are you mad? Talking about this, this, these things is like calling her name. It's like going to the mirror and saying Bloody Mary or Candyman, whatever it is. Like, like, it's like you're calling her name. 
And then she shows up and, and you're upset at the power that she has to the point where people in your own room will block you. Well, maybe you need to learn who you're talking to and have some respect. I get that you're a man, but you're in your 20s. Do you get that she's almost 50? And that she's a founding mother, like how you guys say founding father of, of bro. She's a pillar of that community of divested, swirling, bougie black women. Like, hey, she literally alone after writing the book Swirling 10 years later, like, like she's, I mean, she's all over the news. She's got books and things going on to where people are actually being influenced. I mean, she's got, uh, what, what is his name? Ralph Richard Banks. What, what in the hell, hell? How do you know this guy? Jordan Harbinger? How do you know this guy? How do you know these people? But I'm like moving, moving things to the point where her words matter to the point where she is a part of increasing the percentage of black women who have been married outside of the race. Where all these loyal, loyal black women who are just like, I'm going to just stay down by these black men and I'm going to just love them and I'm going to just mammy and I'm going to just mule. And, and if I love harder and harder and harder, maybe one day, you know, I have a dream that one day black men will love black women as much as we love them. One day I have a dream all today that we will be judged by the content of our character and not the skin tone of our skin. And, and, and I have a dream that one day dark skinned black men will love us dark skins as much as they love their red and yellow bones. I have a dream on today. Like, no. No. Crystal is, is, is the queen of burn the cape. She's the queen of walk away. What's that song she always plays? Uh, the, uh, the, baby, you don't belong. I'm, I'm so much better off. Like, no. When I think about the way that things used to be and when I think about the things you took from me, like, ugh. Ugh. Like, it's... <sighs> So you basically dial her number and don't want her to pick up the phone it is what I'm hearing from you. Oh, well, you don't own these conversations. I, mm -hmm, I beg to differ. I, I, I beg to differ. I do. Because there are certain things. Here's the deal. When, oh, what, uh, in college, when you're having these different civil rights conversations and you're having conversations about... Um, white supremacy, uh, like, like there are things where it's like, oh, well, let's say Jane Elliott, right? Jane Elliott, wonderful, powerful, beautiful white woman who was constantly doing these uh, experiments to show white people what racism is like. And then you do this Jane Elliott experience and then she comes, she comes across and she comes in the room and people respond to her and they're like, hey, you don't own this conversation. Mm, I beg to differ. Can, did she patent it? No. Can she write her name on, 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 on the verbi verbiage? No. But I mean, she's the queen of the conversation. And whoever gave the, her, her those tools, I mean, they're guiding the game. Like, what, like, what, like what, what do you want? What do you want? I mean, if you're going to have a conversation, you know... Blah, 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 by any means necessary. And the OAAU and, and Malcolm X said that we should do this. And, and then you, you take all of Malcolm X's principles to free a group of people. And then he shows up and other you don't own this conversation. Really? Everything you say is based off of the last year of my life and every speech that I made during those 50 weeks between the time that I left the Nation of Islam and was assassinated. What do you mean I don't own this conversation? I built this. We built this city. <laughs> We built this. <laughs> like, 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 what do you really want? There are so many things that I learned from authors like Bell Hooks when it came to, you know how you go through something, whether it's racism or sexism or, you know, it's some kind of bigotry and you know what it is, but you don't have a name to, 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 to put to it. You can't barely describe it, right? You're like, I know what it is. It just, that's why they, these hate crimes are so hard to prove, Right. You, you know what you're going through, but when people sit down and ask you to prove it, you know, you're, you're kind of lost for words. These are the people who give us language to the things that it is hard for us to describe and help us to validate it as a thing because they gave us the words to help describe the situation that we're in. Do you get it? Because that came out, that came out a little bit convoluted, but I mean, they help us to figure it out by giving us articulate language. By giving us a way to call a thing a thing. 
So white privilege, was that always a phrase? The answer is no. Was anti-black racism always a phrase? The answer is no. Was, you know, I, I, I think I'm belaboring the point and beating a dead horse. I think you get it. And then these people are like, oh, Ooh, you don't know the conversation. Ooh, it's my room. You don't have a right. It's like you what behind the ears ass child. She was doing this by herself when there was no support, when everybody was jumping down her throat. When she was breaking down, crying on live stream, she was in this by herself. Oh, you've got how many thousands of followers? You can just open up your own room and leave mine. You it's 10 years. That's 10 years worth of getting her hands dirty to get all those followers. Your lack of respect. I mean, this is why a lot of grown folk don't mess with kids and, and young people. Now, of course I do, but I definitely have, you know, a, a a little teenage shit or two in my family that I I just can't deal with. The 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 arrogance the, the it is too much. It's like you guys have no idea what we went through to get here, and you're not gonna know until it's too late. It would behoove you to try to have some manners and some decorum about yourself before you blow it. I mean, even to have Crystal and Karazin on your on your stage, I mean, Judge Lynn Toller was in the audience. Not because you're anybody, but because you have Crystal and Karazin on your stage. You're welcome. I, I, the, the most I've gotten from, I've, I've gotten Crystal and Karazin to be in my comment section. A live stream, and it, it, it hasn't happened. You got for her for how long on your stage? Like, like that is some of the best publicity you can get for, for the area that you're in. You're welcome. And all that happened for free. I can't. Can't, can't. Um, y'all, I don't like Clubhouse. It's not for me. Different social media platforms come out, Kicker, Stitcher, Twitch, Tumblr, like whatever. And they all have a specific personality. They do. They, they, Insta, Instagram has a way about it. Twitter has a way about it. Uh, Facebook has a culture. Oh, oh my God, people on Facebook. Facebook land is just not for me. Um, ooh, I'm, I'm literally cringing. <laughs> cringing uh, of Facebook. Um, I'm more of a TikToker and a YouTuber. And um, I don't know. I just need, uh, I, I need a little bit more happiness and cuteness and, and love involved in things because this, the, the whole ugly argue back and forth drama thing really does take me down. Uh, it, it really does take me down and warp my personality and I, I have to protect what I keep inside. So anyhow, um, this is a half hour rant. <laughs> so you can go on ahead and tell me in the comment sections, do you like Clubhouse? What do you like about Clubhouse? To me, Clubhouse is just Miss New Booty. Like I found you, Miss New Booty. Get it together, right? Like it just, uh, you, you, you're just, you're the new girl. So by merit of being new, you're hot, but in reality, you know, <laughs> YouTube is uh, that thing. <laughs> or, you know, I, I think a lot of people like Twitter. I, I feel like Twitter is often very busy, but I never could really get into Twitter. I post to Twitter, but I'm not like on it. I just, you know, it's how I share some of my links. Anyhow, um, I am wore out. <laughs> from this clubhouse. I think I'm going to end up removing the app from my phone. It just, it's nonsense. And I thought that it was the type of conversations our, um, our beloved Chris was trying to escape. Maybe not. Uh, maybe I misunderstood the move, but, um, yeah. <sighs> 
I just want better for black women. Uh, just like it's not our responsibility to, you know, become the teachers and educators and senseis of white people who want to learn about anti-black racism. It's also not, you know, upon us to become these teachers and senseis and professors for, you know, black men who are convinced that they don't participate in misogyny or misogynoir. It's just a lot to deal with from the people who distribute the oppression to make you break it down as if it's never happened and they don't believe you. It, it's it's too much. It, it's a crazy making process to be put through something by someone and for them to tell you, well, well, well tell me how it happened. How did it happen? What did I do? Educate me. God. Um, I'm just getting old. I I think that's what it is. I'm just getting old. And I don't know how some of these dusty women in their 40s do it, where they're just constantly cussing people out and going to and fro with nasty things because... I'm I'm getting I'm mm-mm. I'm getting old, y'all, and I I I, I just don't want to do it. I don't want to fight. I want to buy boxes, five pound boxes of of Easter candy for my niece and nephews, and 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 record videos of it being dumped all over them. You know, I just mm, Cadbury eggs and things, and 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 I don't even celebrate. Good Lord, I'm not a Christian, but like. I, Love is a need. Like this whole movement is supposed to be about the betterment of black women. It's supposed to be the, about the enhancement and advancement and advancement of black women. And they get themselves into these side <sighs> sideline conversations that do more to hurt than help. And I'm just like, why are we discussing this? Like you can only put your energy in one place, right? Like, like, like you can only do so much before you need a nap. And like I said, I'm uh, mid thirties. I need a nap. Like, like you can only invest so much energy into something until okay. Well, now you got to go to the bathroom. Now you got to eat some food. Like, if, I mean, I get it. We all have the same twenty four hours in a day that Beyonce does. But clearly, she's she's working with something we we're not. Oshun, yeah, yeah, oh, I don't know. But like, Ain't enough time and energy of the, in the day for me to for me to uh, catch on a clubhouse. I, I don't I don't think I'm gonna do it. And for this to be an over half hour rant, I'm, I'm I kind of know I'm not gonna do it. It's about to come off my phone tonight. Um, it's ridiculous. I feel like people are asking so many old questions, questions that were answered seven years ago. Go watch the video, bro. Go to the woman's channel and click on the title, bro. If you really want to know, you will do the research. If you really want to know. And I know that from personal experience. All the things that I read about, all the things that I get my myself into, and all the sticky situations, like I go and and I dig, I dig my nose in some information. I don't know how many sets of books that I've thrown away because I travel so much, and my books get really heavy in my luggage, and you know you can end up paying fifty five, sixty five, seventy five, extra dollars, you know, when you're when you're flying. Right, because your luggage is too heavy, or, or you know whatnot. A bag that you thought was going to be a carry on has to be you know checked. And I've given away like a, a small library of books, and even now I'm looking at my books, and I'm just like, Chaka, where did all these come from? And and I didn't even notice that I was like you know collecting, but I'm like, good God, like, whew. But it's like because when you want to know, you want to know. You'll do the work. If you want knowledge, you will seek. You're going to ask and look for an answer. You're going to seek and hope to find. You're going to knock and hope that the door will be open to you. So like all these raggedy, repeated, put the CD on repeat and don't press skip. Like, like <laughs> I don't want to do this. That, 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 that's a video.
Go look at it. It's from 2018. Go watch. Let's not do this twice. It's redundant. It's a time waster. And I'm not about to sit here and get, you know, because some people, here's the deal. A person can be wrong, 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 wrong. But if they're, a better arg- if, if they're better at argumentation than you, if they're more articulate than you, I, I mean, it, it, it boils down to, you know, selling water to a whale, so selling ice to an Eskimo, selling salt to a snail. Like, you can be as right as the day is long, but 500 people will decide that you're wrong if you get into an argument with somebody who's more eloquent than you. And I'm like, I get it. You're you're a fast talker, but no, like, I'm still on a mission and I don't want to be deterred. And I can engage in this conversation with you because real deal, I, I have enough humility to know that I can't talk how you talk. But I know that I'm right and that you're wrong, so I'm just going to move on and leave you to it. But you get into these argument arguments and it's like, oh, well, maybe this person must be right. When in reality, they're just great at gaslighting you. They're just great at calling you enough names to get you frazzled enough to have an emotional response to where now you're stumbling over your words. Like they wanted you to. Oof. Oof. You guys. This isn't for me. Um... Lord, this is long. My hope is for my channel to give black women, obviously, maybe I'm not going to achieve that in the next year or the next three years, but my hope is to reach into the lives of black women and their children and to give them something that they felt like they were missing. And things like this take the piss out of me. I mean, take the piss. So I... You could call me uppity. I just... I, I, I can't get involved. I'm literally like in bed recording, like in in bed laying on my side recording this, tired. You know, trying to follow Crystalline's productivity, but listening to these people who are just so far behind. It's like, what am I supposed to do? Like, it's like going through college and it's like, okay, well, I'm in the 600 level course and you're on some 101 stuff. Like, like, go to your class. Go to your class, like freshman. <sighs> I'm tired. I'm up at unicorn and I'm out.